Uh, first of all, I would like to say shalom, and uh, I'm very pleased to be amongst you for the fourth time. And it is always a pleasure to be with Yossi because uh, you can expect the unexpected. Uh, so he has given me a new brief, and I will try to stick to the new brief. Uh, the first thing I would like to say regarding uh, Can is that uh, I have decided that uh, I will take the award and I will let uh, uh, Martin Sorrell getting the attention. Uh, so M M Martin is there and, and I'm here, so it's a good separation of tasks. Uh, and and you, have, the, you have to applaud Maurice that he preferred to come here than protect the turf in Cannes. I will, be go I will be going to Cannes in uh, two days. For the time being, what I know is that uh, we are doing extremely well and all our operations are winning a lot of awards. But uh, the one I would like to speak very specifically about is linked to an operation which I think is uh, extremely important, which is an operation which uh, happened in this very country. On uh, Sunday, uh, we have uh, signed a, an agreement which was cementing a partnership that we have with uh, Beaumont, Bear, Rivney, a BBR agency, and I guess that Yoram is somewhere here. Yoram, stand, stand up. up. Yoram, stand up. Yoram Bauman, BBR. And. Uh, we, we have uh, uh, signed this agreement by which we are acquiring BBR and your uh, arm will be running. They're acquiring you. You think you are acquiring them. I, I know how it works in Israel, so you don't need to teach me. Uh, I know that uh, what happened is that uh, now he is owning us. That's clear. Uh, but, you know, sometime in the Holy Land, you accept to do deals uh, in a very specific way. Uh, so, Yoram will be running all our operation uh, in Israel, and uh, we have been working on, uh, and they have been working on a superb idea. Uh, some of you know maybe that since many years I have tried and successfully to work on a peace campaign, and uh, Yoram and his teams have been more successful than I have been by developing uh, a campaign regarding uh, the relationship between Israelis and Palestinians, and it is called Blood Relations, because it is about uh, the violence, terror, war, uh, people wounded, people dying, people dead, and uh, at the end of the day, instead of looking for revenge, the idea was to invite them to donate their blood, to donate their blood, to uh, build a much better relationship and to cross the, the blood. What happened is that uh, instead of voting one of the numerous uh, 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 kind of resolution that the UN nation is used to do when it comes to Israel, we got an award for this campaign, and I have presented that award yesterday to Shimon Peres, and he was very moved, and he recognized that it was the first time that UN nation, United Nation, was giving an award to Israel instead of a resolution against Israel. <laughs> the second thing is that in Cannes, where all the advertising community of the world something like 20,000 admin, so it's time to take over the operations, are located in Cannes, and there is a very tough juries who are uh, voting for the campaign of each other, and obviously there is more competition than collaboration in this kind of jury. For the first time, BBR is making history in Israel because for the first time in Israel history, one agency has got four gold lions. And that agency is BBR Sachi and Sachi for this blood relation campaign. 
So I'm very pleased. We will charge you for this advertisement. He has already charged me. <laughs> Don't worry about that. I know how it works. I told you. I, I have been taught uh, several years ago. That was Monday, uh, Sunday. On Monday, uh, at the invitation of uh, Shimon Peres, and uh, this was, and Yossi may remember that, even though it's at this time of the day, he is a little bit asleep. Uh, but it was two years ago when we were together at Davos, uh, Shimon Peres suggested that we invest in uh, the Palestinian territories. And it took us time to find the right agency and to negotiate the right deal. And on, Tuesday, on Monday, I was in Ramallah with uh, uh, Jean-Yves Naouri. I don't know if he's in the room. With, Mr. Naouri, stand, stand up, please, stand he, he's, up. Uh, if he's in the room, he's, he's here. He doesn't dare yes, not to be here. Yes, Jean-Yves is the group Chief Operating Officer of Publicis You can give Group. him a warmer uh, welcome. Yes, a much warmer welcome. <laughs> we were in uh, Ramallah with uh, uh, Bashar Masri, and uh, we visited the agency. It's a small agency, very nice, totally digitized, uh, with a lot of enthusiasm, and we made a presentation in a room which was the most as crowded as this one, with a lot of uh, Palestinian entrepreneurs. And uh, I insisted that this investment was not made because of what I could expect in terms of return, but I was expecting a much higher return, which is a collaboration between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, And I must tell you that the reaction of these entrepreneurs and the media in this Palestinian territory has been just fantastic. And they have been very moved by the idea. It's the first time there is investment from a listed company. And uh, I know that uh, things will happen because I received this morning a, an email and uh, uh, the CEO of the agency want to meet with uh, uh, Yoram and to see how they can collaborate. And that is already a victory, and I'm very happy with that. <laughs> now, if you don't mind, maybe I will speak about the subject. If you insist. No, no, it's just... Uh, <laughs> I received the brief, I'm trying to stick to the brief. Uh, which is what's new in new media. Uh, I'm not sure that anyone in this room, except uh, maybe John, Julius, and Stefan, <laughs> knows exactly what will happen in new media tomorrow. Because uh, if you look at the revolution which happened in the last 15 years, uh, I, I'm not sure that one single person on earth, including the inventors of internet, has ever thought how this would have transformed the life of the people. And um, if there is something that we can be sure of, is that we are entering in an era of change. And what will happen is that everything will change. And we. Mm -hmm. we including what the innovators are inventing, is something which is always used in a way which is going beyond their own uh, imagination. The way people are using internet, mobile, uh, communication, the smartphone, or, or all the devices or platforms which are at their disposal, is not something that has been thought through by the inventors of this platform. It's something which has been simply uh, owned by the people, and they are making their own use of that, and uh, they are changing the world. Uh, no one would have thought that uh, uh, the social media, Twitter, Facebook, the SMS, would have fostered the 
uh, Arab Spring. And when we were discussing with uh, Mark Zuckerberg last year at the EG8, and uh, Stefan was there, Yossi also, uh, he explained that they had no idea that this would have happened, and they didn't notice immediately what was going on. And in fact, it's simply that the people are using the tools, and the tools are changed and changing in the hand of the people. That is what we call empowerment. And people are empowered to change the world. And this is what's going on. And this is what will be going on in the future. So don't expect that uh, uh, some inventor, some innovator will tell you this is what will happen tomorrow. It's you. And all the people who will be using the tools who will change the world. But the, the consequences are very important for us. If uh, uh, we, we think about uh, uh, wha what happened just recently in the last few years, it, it's something which is also very interesting in how things are happening. For example, Amazon. Amazon should not have existed. It should have been invented by Walmart or by Target or by somebody else. And the reality is that, in fact, everything is happening outside mainstream. And uh, it's the same for Facebook. Facebook or Google should have been invented by Microsoft or Facebook should have been invented by Google. And the fact that Facebook or Twitter are invented outside what is new shows clearly that um, the people who are inventing the future are not necessarily coming from the large established uh, company. Probably that uh, John will have a, a different opinion and maybe it will help us uh, understanding what's going on. When it comes to my own business, I know that we have to change every day. And if there is one thing for which I'm absolutely sure is that what we are today has nothing to do with what will we be tomorrow. We have already uh, the largest piece of our business, which is digital. It is uh, more than analog. We have a third of our business which is pure digital. And they believe that this will represent in the next three to five years something like 50%. And I know that our structures, our organization, our people will not be the same in five years. That we have to accept the change and we have to lead the change if we don't want to be led by the change. Thank you. And uh, I don't know. One more. One more. One more. First of all, thank you very much, Maurice, as always. Maybe one word about the future of Europe as it seen from your point. Okay, I'm not sure that I'm the best place to, to discuss about uh, uh, Europe or the Eurozone. Uh, clearly, we are facing a situation which is extremely difficult. And uh, we have uh, currently some debate which are very tough uh, because there are the people who believe that uh, growth can come uh, simply by putting more money, a little bit uh, a la Keynes. Or, and there are the people who think that the first thing that we have to do is to fix uh, our fiscal issues, uh, our debt burden, which is far too high for a lot of countries, or our uh, fiscal deficit. The reality is that uh, this debate will not find a solution in the near term. And as Europe is uh, not one country and there is no one federation with one single power, but it is 27 countries. And like in Israel, where you put three people uh, in a room and when you open the door, there are five ideas. Uh, in, in Europe, it's about the same. We have 27 countries, and when it comes to a decision, you have uh, 35 opinions. And that's the reason why we cannot move very fast. So one of the issues we have is uh, how we can have a, an alignment on policies regarding uh, uh, the, the, the taxes, 
regarding the uh, deficits, the public deficits, and how we can create jobs, which is the most stringent issue that we are facing today. And jobs cannot be created in Europe just by uh, saying, uh, I want to create jobs, and growth cannot come that easily. So we will go through probably a very difficult period, which will, be, which will last for at least three to five years. Ladies and gentlemen, Maurice Levy. Thank you, Maurice.